Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we are going to do a second unboxing of another RC plane. This is going to be a very exciting unboxing, at least for me. This plane is quite old. It has been like uh, two or three years since the first version came out. And this is the second version. It's a bit more technologically advanced. It has a different uh, flight safe modes for beginner pilots to try with and if you are an experienced pilot you can just turn them off and you can enjoy the plane in a similar manner so this is the horizon hobby carbon cup s2 with a wingspan of 1.3 meters and since this is the second version this is more upgraded it comes with a bunch of safe technologies to help uh, beginner pilots you know first time pilots to fly very easily without having to be scared of crashing as you can see the on the box it says skill level one so the company boasts that even if you have zero experience in RC flying you can pick one of these up uh, this comes in a bunch of versions bind and fly ready to fly and all that all of the stuff so the one that I got is the uh, RTO version, which means that you get everything inside the box. Uh, it needs 15 to 20 minutes of assembly, but that's it. So it comes with the plane, the, the smart battery, the radio, and everything else you need to fly. So there's just a bunch of screws that you need to screw in to assemble the, the main wing and the landing gear and the tail section charge up your batteries and you're good to go so I'll, I'll go around the box how it looks so this is the front side of the box and as mentioned earlier it says skill level one so if you have zero experience in flying you have never flown before there's no problem so it says uh, it has safe mode which is easy to fly I will explain in a bit what safe mode is and few things are already included in the flight controller and few things you have to buy separately so one of those is the safe plus mode which uh, if you buy a spectrum gps module you can install that in the plane and it will work in conjunction with the safe mode so it gives you a bunch of advantages like you know flying in a hold pattern with, a, with just a flick of a button um, if you think that your plane is going out of control and you're scared you just press that button and the plane will hold its position trying to fly in a circle then it has geofencing uh, what it means in short is that when you have the GPS module before you take off you do a GPS initialization okay and it creates an imaginary boundary uh, surrounding that takeoff location and what happens is even if you are a beginner pilot or maybe say you lost control from your radio your radio powered off due to some reason battery died or something when the plane hits that boundary that imaginary boundary no need for your inputs it will turn around and come back to its own location and it will keep doing that so the box is created on all four sides even if you lose control or maybe you got you know distracted for some reason and the plane keeps on flying 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 the moment it hits any of those imaginary walls on any of the four sides it just turns automatically 180 degrees and it comes back to you um, also along with that geofencing if you install the gps you get a feature which is known as auto land so what you have to do is this is mostly for beginner pilots because it's very difficult to orient a plane when it's coming towards you when it's going away from you your radio left is the plane's left and your radio's right is the plane's right but when it's coming towards you it's kind of opposite your left becomes right and your right becomes left for the plane so for beginner pilot it, it becomes very difficult to line up with the runway so what auto land is when you have your gps calibrated on this plane you somewhat bring it close to the runway it's not necessary that you have to exactly line up with the center of the runway and the gps module will take care of the rest so pretty pretty fantastic for beginner pilots obviously and the third thing which you can opt for it's an optional optional component uh, 
So there are two optional components for this plane. One is a GPS module that we spoke about and the other one is a landing assist. So landing assist is nothing but uh, a sensor which has like two infrared lights and you put that on the bottom side of the fuselage. And what happens is when you are not a beginner pilot or maybe you, you are an experienced pilot but there is strong wind and it's difficult to land. Like you know that your plane is going to bounce and you come in for a hard landing that sensor will sense the ground. It, it senses the distance of the fuselage from the ground and it automatically, without your inputs, it controls the pitch angle and the throttle to give you a smoother landing. So that will protect your landing gear or maybe your floats. Oh, so this plane also comes with optional floats. If you have a nearby lake and you don't have a you know open field, you can do takeoff and landing on water. So just a few screws to unscrew and you can take off your landing gear put those floats in and you are ready to fly from water and land as well so this is the front of the box and so if you if i turn the box on its back side you see the features which comes inside the box and the things which are optional so optional things being the first one is the float which you can buy separately from Horizon Hobby. Uh, then we have the GPS module, which works in conjunction with the safe technology that is already installed in the flight controller. And the last thing is the landing assist sensor. Other than that, since this is a ready to run version, it comes with a Spectrum DXS radio. Uh, Spectrum is like the Ferrari of you know radio control world. So it comes with a Spectrum smart battery which is awesome. Uh, it comes with the Spectrum DXS radio. Uh, the safe mode is already installed in the flight controller. The plane uh, comes with the landing gear, the wings and all of that stuff. So just a few screws that you need to assemble and you will be good to fly within 15 to 20 minutes. The other thing that I wanted to talk about this, the main wings have a uh, provision for your flaps so your flaps are already there in the wings but they are not the flap slots are not cut into place so what you have to do is you there's already a channel on the receiver a free channel where you can install your flaps but you have to buy two servos and you have to cut the wings uh, the flap slots the slots are already done you just have to cut it and you will have a uh, flap set up as well so this is a six channel radio and this is pretty much the box so by the way this 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 model that i got this is not new this is a used one uh, the new one is pretty expensive for me so i thought why not try with the old one because like i said earlier i have zero experience in flying and never had any successful flights i have crashed multiple times and these things are pretty expensive you know um, rc hobby is very expensive be it fast cars or planes or boats everything is expensive and you have high chances of damaging things or crashing things when it comes to airplanes because with cars and boats it's still manageable they are on the ground the plane flies if anything goes wrong you drop like a rock so that's why i i got this used and it was a pretty good deal so what what i got is the ready to run version the plane has no no significant damages no wear and tear it's, it's almost like new and it flies perfectly just like the new one so this is what i got this is the box and along with that i got few other accessories which i will show you so this is this I'm, I'm trying to do it in a reverse way usually people start with the main thing but i'm doing it in the reverse way so this is one of the boxes of accessories that i got with this with this deal and I'll tell you what it has. So if you see, this thing is a brand new tail set. This is extra by the way. So you, you already have a tail set and the main wing, flight controller, battery, fuselage, motor, ESC, electronics, everything. This is this is a new, new set which uh, the user bought. But luckily he never crashed, so he never used it and now I have it. So this is one thing that I got extra. 
and he has put the user manual by the way inside this and let me tell you when it comes to documentation this thing has got a lot if you can see the width this is the detailed user manual so and and it is in english so you can understand like how much information is there for you to go through obviously it tells you how to use the default radio that comes with the retro run version and if you want you can bind it with your own radio uh, any spectrum dx10 dx18 dx8 whatever you want so it comes with this and it also comes with a quick start guide that is for beginner pilots so if you are a beginner obviously you will not go through hundreds of pages so you have a quick start guide it's not in here it might be inside the box so we'll, we'll check it out so this is what I got extra, a brand new tail set with the horizontal and vertical stabilizers. Let's come to the second box that I got extra. So this is the second box, uh, made in China for the Carbon Cup S2. So let's see what we have in here. Okay. So this is again a brand new totally unused set of main wings you can see the seals are still on he has never used it never took it out of the packet that it comes inside so this is the main wing uh, if you see carefully this is your aileron right this is your aileron and this side which is right now fixed if you look at the other side you see there is a slot if you can cut through in this slot you can put your servo horn and this guy will act as your flaps so just two things you need to do you need to give a straight cut here and you need to take this piece off this becomes free you put your servo horn and your servo that you buy so it becomes your optional flap setting and you can put this in your channel 8 which is already free in the receiver we'll, we'll take a look at it soon so this is your main wing uh, these are some decals that you get and this is the top portion which, which joins the two wings together so something like this if I take out the other half of the main wing it is something like this and in both the sets you have your aileron already in place if you want you can do your own flap setting by any cheap servos and you're good to go so let's put this aside last thing that I have here is the optional floats. They look a bit flimsy on the lens but trust me this is this is rock solid. Uh, it's EPO foam uh, the main body but you have some like hard it's it's some kind of hard plastic on the bottom surface so the user told me that you can take off and land on grass with this it's not necessary that you have to have the wheels but I'm going to go for the wheels because this is a bush plane and trust me it looks awesome with the with the set of wheels that it comes with uh, this is one of the exciting investments that I've done because not only the plane is very safe it looks amazing it flies amazing I have not I'm not saying that from my own experience because I've never flown before but I've watched thousands of videos because this this was released two years back so it's pretty old you will find like hundreds of videos on YouTube already doing unboxing and flight reviews and your GPS installation guides and all those stuff but this thing looks amazing and especially with the, with the wheels on we'll, we'll take a look at that so these are the floats pretty good condition not not a single scratch on them so this is what we have extra now we will go into the main unboxing uh, 
So the thing is, uh, whatever extra accessories that I showed you, it, it comes around um, 4,000 to 5,000 pesos worth of accessories, the three boxes that we went through, sorry, the two boxes and the floor. And this thing right now is still popular. It's two years old, but it's still popular. People are buying this. And in most of the popular sites you will see this is out of stock because people are buying this anyway. Doesn't matter if you are a beginner, if you are an experienced pilot, this thing can do inside loops, outside loops, all kinds of crazy stuff. And whenever you are scared, the weather is bad or maybe your kid is flying, you just put it into the beginner mode and it's, it's like a DJI drone. It, it does most of the flying for you without even you doing anything. So uh, this thing new costs around 10 to 12,000 pesos based on your location where it's coming from. And the accessories co will cost you around 4,000 to 5,000. So almost 16 to 17,000 pesos I'm talking about if you are buying it brand new. But since this one is used, I got the entire thing for 10,000 pesos. So I saved 7,000 pesos anyway. So let's go inside the box and see what we have. It's a pretty big box. By the way, this, this is the 1.3 meter wingspan version. Uh, I, I heard from someone that if you want, you can go for a bigger one. Everything is same, only the wingspan will be 2 meters. I'm not sure if that's true, but this seems to be the perfect size for for any any pilot, be it beginner or experienced, because this is not small enough and this is not big enough. You can fit it inside the trunk of any regular car. Uh, why I say it is because the way you assemble the wings, the main wings on the aircraft, it's very difficult to take it off. Like it's, it's, it's not practical taking the wings off, setting up the ailerons, connecting the wires and everything. So once you put it on, it, it's meant to be kept on unless you are doing a long travel and you need to take apart the entire plane to fit inside the box. Once you assemble it, it's best to keep it outside assembled. So this is the perfect size because the smaller your plane becomes, it becomes more vulnerable to strong winds and it's not as stable. Uh, and bigger planes, uh, they, they are difficult to maintain and store. So this this is the optimum size that you can get for. So I, I opted for this anyway. So let's take out the box and keep it aside. We don't need that for now. start from the right side uh, yeah I, I forgot to mention about this so this is a brand new propeller it's, it's extra the plane uh, it already has one but this is an extra one which the user got and he never used it so this is something that I also got and this is the default prop which comes inside the box so if you see both the models are exactly the same. Uh, the pitch is same, the length is same. So this is not a high performance prop. This is this is exactly the same one. The reason why he got this is because if you see the sides of this prop, I'm not sure if you are able to see it, but if you see it close enough, uh, it has a bunch of scratches because the user, he sometimes hit the tree branches or grass and he had a hard landing. So the prop got a beating okay but it flies perfectly so there's there's no degrade degradence in the performance but he got a new one anyway so these are the props next what we have is the top mount assembly for the main wings so you join the main wings and then you screw this on top and it holds it together on the fuselage so I'll keep things outside one by one as I take them out. Okay. Uh, this, I'm not sure what the material is, but it looks like the main wing spur. 
so this gives support to your wing you put it inside the wings half of it sits on the right side and half of it sits on the left side it gives a support because like i mentioned earlier this this thing can do 3d flights and you will need some kind of support for something which is 1.3 meters in length so this is what helps in giving it strength okay and this is the spectrum smart battery it's a 3s2200 milliamp lipo uh, it also comes with a smart charger this is a charger okay so i'll i'll tell you something about this battery why it is very expensive first of all and why it's called a smart battery in the first place so if you see usually let me take it out of the charger by the way this is this is the charger can you can you believe that i have never seen lipo chargers this small this is even smaller than my my phone phone charger like it's small and it's light so on one end you have a regular uh, usb type c uh, the the previous owner of this plane he, he lost the cable but anyway we we have those cables anyway lying around many of them in our home so on one side it takes a regular usb type c and the other side can be a type b so you can plug it in your power supply at home or if you're traveling in your car maybe you're you're traveling with your plane to the field and you forgot to charge the batteries last night just plug it into your normal dc charger inside your car and this thing is good to go so this is the charger the smallest one i have seen so far in my life which can charge a 3s2200 milliamp battery now this is a lipo battery if you notice it is 2200 milliamp 3s but just look at the size of it just see the size it's very compact it's very expensive than a regular 2200 milliamp battery and it it has a third wire I don't exactly remember the technical name of it but what it does it it, it helps sending telemetry to your to your radio back okay so now why it is smart this battery can self discharge on its own you don't have to do anything it can self discharge it can self balance by self balance i mean the three cells inside they they balance their current automatically and self discharge you can you can set it a timer so let's say normally we do self discharge on lipos because uh, if you have your lipo fully charged and you are not using it which means that the battery is not discharging its power and you keep that unused for say 5 or 6 days that damages the lifespan of your battery and it's like people are supposed to do that like if you are flying you are supposed to charge your batteries if you are not flying if your battery is empty you are supposed to charge it you no know, like half half of its capacity and if it is full charged and you are not using it you are supposed to discharge that half capacity so those things are manual on regular batteries you have to manually do it connect it to the charger put it on discharge put it on charge balancing also do you you have to do manually this thing does everything on its own you just have to set the timer maybe you decide that i'm not going to fly for the next 10 days i'm not going to fly for the next 5 days so you can put how many hours later this will automatically start discharging itself and also balancing it it does everything on its own so that's why it's smart battery it's double the price I agree it's double the price of a regular 22 amp uh, 2200 milliamp battery and it's also compact perfect for a beginner aircraft because you can put this in your plane and your plane won't be heavier uh like if you put it uh if you put a regular 2200 milliamp battery so that saves you weight it's good for beginner pilots the lighter your plane is the easier it is to fly so it's double the price but it's worth every penny and it will last you you know longer than any regular lipo 3s lipo 
So I'll put this aside. And now let's talk about the radio. This is a Spectrum DXS. Okay. So it's mode 2. Uh, this is the Spectrum smart radio that comes with in, in, inside this box. And like I said, if you are not used to uh, any other radios, because a lot of people will have multiple planes, like 10 to 15 planes, and then probably they prefer their used radio. Like people will have 10 to 15 planes and they will have a pretty, you know, sophisticated and complicated expensive radio. And when you become used to a particular radio, you would want to fly all your models with that radio because it takes some time to get used to it. So it's almost like driving a car or a motorcycle. Once you're used to driving your own motorcycle, it becomes difficult to drive someone else's motorcycle. So similar to that, if you want, you can bind it to your own radio, but this is the default one that it comes with. So pretty basic mode two. This is your throttle on the left side, uh, throttle and your rudder. On the right stick, you have your elevator, which up and down, and your ailerons. Okay. Uh, if I turn the radio over, so you see I have this toggle switch. Uh, this is actually a three position toggle switch uh, on the back side. So this, this is for the modes. So when you have it in position zero, it, it means beginner. Uh, in this video, I'm going to assemble the entire plane and I'm going to connect it to the battery and I'll show you how it works. Uh, for now, I'll just give you a brief description of what beginner means. So beginner means when you have this toggle switch in position zero, I'm going back to the flight controls. No matter how much rudder input you give to the plane, you can you can bring it all the way to the to the end. The plane will have a maximum yaw angle. Beyond that, it won't move, even if you have it in the maximum position. This is I'm I'm talking about beginner mode. Similarly, if you go to the elevator pitch up and down and your roll movements, even if you have the pitch all the way down, like pitch down means your stick down, and you want to pitch up. I think the plane goes only 15 degrees. It, it won't cross even if you have it in the extreme end. Similarly to your aileron. So this is extremely easy for beginners to get used to the plane with because they don't have to worry about anything. You know, they don't have to worry about too much banking, too much pitch, stalling the aircraft. Because trust me, if you don't have this and you have zero experience in flying, you are going to crash in the first 30 seconds, just after takeoff. So this is one of the feature of safe, uh, but you get this when you have the toggle switch in beginner mode, that is position zero. Next thing, when you are trying to take off and you have it in beginner mode, when you're trying to take off, you just put a little bit of throttle, okay? No need to pitch up, the aircraft does that for you. Without your, without any of your inputs, you don't have to put any elevated inputs. You just give it a throttle, maybe 60% to take off, which is a lot for this plane. Trust me, 60% throttle is a lot. You give 50 to 60% throttle. If it is in beginner mode, it will pitch up automatically. And even if you give, you know, put your stick to the extreme end, it won't pitch up more than 15 degrees. One, one more feature of the beginner mode. Uh, let's say you are flying and suddenly you stop giving any inputs and your plane is in a is in a banked you know position or maybe pitch up or pitch down position and you stop giving inputs it will immediately self level itself like if this is the wing and your plane plane's current position is this it's in the beginner mode, you stop giving inputs, immediately it will self-level, okay? It might be in the pitch up position, you stop giving inputs, it will self-level. If it is in pitch down, it will pitch up and it will level itself out. So these are the things that you get in the beginner mode. Now let's come to the second mode, which is intermediate mode. So 
take this toggle switch and put it one position up in position one so when you do that what happens is you get a little more freedom uh, considering the movements that you're trying to make so if the beginner mode allowed you to you know your 15 degrees pitch 15 degrees and roll 15 degrees on on the intermediate mode you get little more maybe 30 to 40 i don't remember the exact uh, number but it gives you a little bit more freedom and with intermediate mode you don't have self leveling so maybe your plane is banking to the left and it's an intermediate mode you stop giving inputs it will still be in the bank state it won't self level so self leveling is totally cut off in the intermediate mode now the last and the final mode when you put the toggle switch to position 3 that is the experienced mode okay when you do that you have unlimited your pitch and roll angles so that's that's what experienced pilots do to do 3d flights you can do loops you can do rolls all 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 sorts of crazy stuff so experienced mode will not have self leveling it will not restrict you to any uh, degree of your pitch or roll and that's that's it about the radio mm, there's one more thing that i want to show you so the modes are there on the left side back toggle switch there is a toggle switch on the right which has two positions right so this is for your high and low so it's like your expo you put it in low uh, you put it in the position zero and you have a little bit of movement on your control surfaces you put it in position one that that is your high expo and your control surfaces move a lot more that is one the only problem with this radio is if you see this toggle switch is missing it's missing so something happened i think the user dropped it from his hand and the, the switch functions but the part which sticks outside which you use to push the switch that is missing so i need to do something about this and this is a throttle hold switch by the way so this is a throttle hold uh, throttle holds are very common in rc helicopters and planes it's, it's just a safety switch when it is on no matter how much throttle you give your motor won't spin up and it will save your fingers or something else so that is a throttle hold switch it's very common and it's very usual for uh, you know most basic radios to come with and it's a safety feature uh, so it makes sure it makes sure that unless and until you are ready to fly your motors will not spin up even if you accidentally pull the throttle stick so that is a throttle, throttle hold and this one this is a very interesting one so if you see uh, just on the left hand side where we have our mode toggle switch below that there is a push button okay so it has two functions if you have the GPS module installed you line up the plane somewhat to the runway and you keep this button pressed and your plane will auto land trust me it does that I have never experienced it I have watched hundreds of videos in YouTube and it does that people whoever uh, have the gps module installed it's a spectrum gps module uh, it will be the, the part number will be mentioned in the instruction manual you can order it separately if you want uh, if you have that you just line up not even line up you bring the plane close to the runway maybe 10 to 15 feet high and you keep this button pressed that plane is going to detect your takeoff position and automatically it will land Along with that, if you have the landing assist, it will not only just land, before landing it will flare up so that you have a smooth landing and you protect your wheels, right? But for my case, since I don't have the GPS module, this thing acts as the panic button. So I'm going to be flying in beginner mode anyway because I have zero experience. Let's say, let's say, by chance, I'm not in the beginner mode and the plane is in a state where I know it's going to crash within the next two seconds. I press this button once 
and within a fraction of a second the plane will just self self level itself it's it's almost like a dji drone you know dji drones are so advanced this this plane feels the same so this is going to be very handy for me so that's all about the radio you have a power button and you have to press the power button and hold it for a few seconds to turn it on and off if you see there are it's not glowing right now let me show that again i'll turn it off press and hold it's off now i'm turning it back on press and hold you see two green lights they came on and they went off that's your telemetry so the smart battery that we spoke about it sends live telemetry back to your radio how much battery power you have in your plane you know usually people who do not have live telemetry they have an option in their radio to set a timer like 3 minutes 4 minutes 5 minutes depending on the usual run time flight times that they have that is to remind them that it's 5 minutes your battery usually runs out within 6, six to 7 minutes it's time to land so no need to have that alarm no need you know because this plane based on the type of your flying if you are not too aggressive like i will fly flying in beginner mode in beginner mode it flies for more than 7 to 8 minutes okay i don't have to keep a track of my time because this this uh led lights over here uh, there are a set of you know four green led lights they signify your battery status on the plane so whenever you have like one battery left maybe it's time to get back so that's that's live telemetry i'm going to turn the radio off now and we'll move on with the other parts uh one more thing is this radio doesn't come with a usual handle there are, there are pros and cons for that uh the advantage is that it's smaller in size because it doesn't have a usual longer radio radio antenna so it's a fixed antenna it's short and it doesn't come with a handle so it makes it small easier to you know put it in your backpack but it's very prone to getting dropped from your hand it it just comes with a slot which you can put your fingers in but it's not as comfortable as having a handle on your radio so just a minor thing just wanted to mention that out so i'll put this aside and let's go to the rest of the stuffs uh, this looks to be the bind plug for your radio and receiver okay so these are the set of main wings okay now i'll just take and show you one example so these are the wing struts by the way guys if you if you stick long enough on this video i'm going to do a full assembly on the same video so there's not going to be a part 1 and part 2 and part 3 and part 100 i'm i'm going to do this in a single video so these are the wing struts which provide support to the wings and they attach the other side attaches to the fuselage on the other side and if you see the the ailerons are already attached to the servo okay i'm not supposed to do that you're not supposed to manually move servos that damages them and i'll not do that again and you also have the flaps so since these are the used wing sets the previous owner he has already cut the slot for the flaps to work and he has also installed uh, aftermarket servo so these are the flaps so if you see if i move the servo on with my hand the flaps are moving so there are uh, there are three settings for the flap uh, full flap half flap and zero so that is for the flap settings these are the two main wings and previously i showed you this wing spar so what it does i'll show you now you put this inside here take all the cables for your servos out 
and you take the other wing and you slide it in just like that so keep the cables outside there you go you have your wings and you have the spur supporting the wings inside so that's what okay i'll put the wings aside now if you see it's it's pretty long 1.3 meters that's awesome once done this plane will look good looks amazing trust me okay next we have uh this is your main main landing gear look at the wheels let's see absolute scale replica of a bush plane this this cannot be any better than this so what you have to do is you you have the wheel collars uh, you have to take a screwdriver take one of these off and then slide your wheel back in and you put the collar back so that your wheels don't come off and this thing will be installed on the underside of your fuselage uh, along with the electronics and you there there are multiple plastic bits that you put on these uh, you know landing gear support so that you don't damage your foam because this plane is basically made up of epo foam so these are the landing wheels amazing amazing they they are, they are soft fluffy and they are perfect for your bush flights you can land this plane on sand on gravel on grass maybe tall grass these are quite big so the nose of your plane is going to sit quite high from the ground don't worry about you know tall grass because with smaller planes sometimes with the prop in the front we are worried about the grass because it chops through grass and doesn't take off very well we don't have to worry about that with this one because the wheels anyway will put the nose high up so these are the main landing gear this is the landing gear support uh next we have okay so this is the vertical stabilizer on your tail and the rudder the rudder has the secondary landing gear attached to it so when you are taxiing you can use your rudder to steer the plane on the ground which is pretty cool so this will help your plane steer on the runway or the taxiway when you are taxiing and you are on the ground not in the air so that's pretty awesome i'll put this aside okay next what we have is the horizontal stabilizer and your elevators so let me tell you the the joints that you see right on all the control surfaces on the rudder and this one uh, it looks like they have some kind of tape in between to strengthen the joint otherwise this things will come off after a few flights so that is good and all the places where forces will be applied those things are reinforced with plastic bits so it it says on the box that this plane is pretty durable you can you can do multiple crashes it will not suffer any major damage the best part is even if something is damaged all these parts that i showed you they are available for order separately if you break the fuselage just order the fuselage nothing else because your electronics are probably fine if you break the main wing just order the main wing if you break the tail portion you order the tail portion don't have to worry about wasting money because normally what happens is with normal planes you you break uh, something from the body or the wings the total plane is screwed and it's basically useless it's not worthy of flying so you have to either buy a new plane or you know throw it in trash not with this this plane itself the foam that you see is pretty rock solid it is not supposed to break it says on the box and i have watched videos people crashing even the previous owner crashed nothing broke even if you break something you can order each of this part separately so that's a bonus now coming to the main thing the fuselage wow it's heavy
just look at it guys the amount of details uh, I'm not sure about the specifications of the brushless motor that's inside but the the cowling that you see this is hard plastic this is a hard plastic cowling and you have this prop cone which looks amazing this cone looks amazing so you have this prop cone uh, the previous owner told me that he had a bad landing once and he broke the entire portion of this tail but right now what he has done he has used synthetic resin to glue this back in it's perfectly solid probably the next time I crash if I crash that hard I'll break something from here but not this one this is rock solid right now and these are the servo control horns for your uh, elevator and rudder which is sticking out that is pretty cool not sure why this is not moving okay okay I'll stop doing that so plane is very nosy maybe because of the motor it's a it's quite a big one I'm not sure about uh, the KB ratings uh, maybe I'll, I'll find out find that information in the manual and there happens to be a LED light on the front windscreen I know it looks ugly for a plane which looks so scale and real this sucks I, I cannot tolerate maybe I'll, I'll put a black tape on this but what this signifies when you turn on the plane and you turn on the radio by the way you turn on the radio first and then your plane when they have a successful connection this will this will glow green okay when you put it in the intermediate mode it becomes orange and when you put the radio in expert mode or experience mode whatever you want to call it it becomes red so that is something that anyway if, if the plane is in flight you will anyway not see what color the light is because you will be watching the plane from the ground and the only thing that you will see is the underside of the wings and the body the fuselage so uh, this might be helpful on the ground when you are taxing maybe due to some interference you lost your connection which is not which is never going to happen trust me because the kind of technology spectrum provides it is not supposed to lose connection until and unless your radio runs out of battery so I, I don't see any proper use of this probably it looks so ugly here for a scale looking plain like this I'll, I'll probably put a black tape or a grey color tape to match it with the windshield and one thing I forgot to tell you about the radio that uh, uh, it can be powered with four AA batteries or you can have a small LiPo battery the AA batteries are already provided if you want your radio to run on a LiPo battery you can you can buy it separately and use that the specifications of what kind of LiPo battery you need to buy will be on the manual uh, so let's go inside the plane if you see this is the spectrum receiver and flight controller and you might not be able to see this but if you zoom in close there is a USB uh, connection on the radio so that helps in the programming other than that you have your basic servos and that's pretty much it you have your connection for your ailerons and everything I'm trying to look what's inside uh, channel 8 is free for your flap settings you can connect the flap uh, connections over there and that's it and this is the underside so in case you decide to buy the landing acid sensor it, it goes here and there is a connection on channel 7 where you have to put it so it goes here and if you want to install the GPS the GPS has a slot right over the receiver and you can put the GPS there other than that this is the underside you flick this and you open it up so this is where your battery sits there is a narrow velcro strap to strap it in this is where your battery sits and 
remember I showed you the landing gear support so you are supposed to install it here I won't be able to do that because the landing gear is protected by these plastic pieces which holds it into place I'll have to take them out to put the landing gear in the support in and if you see there are few more I think four plastic sets here on these two sides and two here so these are used for the flaps because let me show you so if you see the flaps there are two two parts you have to mount so this part goes into the usual landing uh, landing gear support slot and this thing goes to the rear so you have four places where you need to screw those in if you want your uh, floats right uh, if you're not using your floats then for the landing gear there's only one slot you have to take these plastic bits off put the landing gear in and then screw them back in that's it so that's it about the unboxing next what we are going to do is we will try and set this plane up uh, that will be the second part and finally what I'll do is I'll power up the plane and I will show you all the modes how they work I won't power up the motor I'm not supposed to do that it's not safe indoors but I will tilt the plane I will bank it I will pitch it up and down and I will show you how each of these modes work so that's it stick around and let's continue to the assembly so we will start uh, putting the parts together I have a cheap tool set that I got from Walmart I'll be using this and in the meantime I've put the smart battery on charge so that after the installation is complete we can power the plane and I can show you the different kinds of stuff we can do so first thing what I want to do is I will screw on the wings we have four screws that we need to take out from the top of the fuselage So these are the four screws that you need to take out and keep in mind before you screw the wings you have to connect the cables for your flaps and your ailerons because once the wing is screwed in you will have no access to those cables and you will have again take them apart. Now, okay, so connecting the ailerons is very easy because on the connectors they are already marked. You just have to match the markings on the wings and on the plane. So it says A I L L and A I L R, which means your aileron left and right. Pick up the wing. And if you see here as well, you have those markings A I L right, your aileron left. Just have to plug them in to the cables, and you also have to make sure this is pretty basic stuff. I'm still repeating. People who are already into this hobby, they, they know the significance of that and what might happen if, if they don't follow it. Uh, you see the cables are in three colors for me it's yellow orange and gray uh, it, it might be white red and black so yellow and white is your signal wire uh, red uh, or orange whatever you got is your positive and the black and brown is your ground so 
I'll turn the plane this way. So, and, and the third cable that you see, you might not have this in yours uh, because I have the flaps, the flap server. So this is for the flaps. And what I'll do is firstly, I'll put this in channel eight. So here's my flight controller and remember guys the, the signal wire whether it is white or yellow it goes to the inside of your receiver or your flight controller in this case we have flight controller we don't have a receiver receiver is separate uh, so the signal wire should be going on to the inside of your flight controller so let me put this in channel 8 It's done. Uh, I have a pretty basic camera setup, so it's right now on a tripod. Uh, I am not able to show you what I'm doing inside, but uh, trust me, it is very simple. Channel eight, channel seven, everything is marked. For the ailerons, you just have to match the cables. The levels are also marked, so I'm taking aileron left from the wings and aileron left from the fuselage and I'm trying to match signal with signal wire so both the yellow cables go on the same side and make sure you push the connectors all the way in you don't want your connectors to come off mid-flight that will be a total disaster next I'm taking aileron light right and again matching up the signal wires, pushing them all the way in and it's done. Uh, the wing struts are something that comes separately and the better way to install them is to first install the wings and then install your wing struts because otherwise they just keep coming into your way and it will give you a hard time installing your wings. So it is already installed. Uh, I will try my best not to break this and you hide your cables like this make sure the wings are sitting tight on the spur okay and one more thing is if you have your flap settings done there will be two control rods coming out near the trailing edge of your aileron these two rods okay these two so these are the uh, the servo horns for the flaps if you have that by default you won't if you not if you're not installing the flaps when you are trying to install the wings these things try to sit on top of the fuselage make sure that does not happen oh by the way I was just going to make a stupid mistake one of the flap horns are not yet connected this way and I'll make sure both the flaps are in the same position zeroed out with respect to the wings and I'll put the linkages on Putting all the linkages is very easy, so you get something like this. So you have a plastic bit sitting on sitting on the horn. Zoom in. 
at all. Hmm. So you have a plastic bit sitting on this horn and there's something like a fork, plastic fork coming out from the linkage rods. You just press that in and there will be a rubber band sort of thing which you just push in which makes sure that your connection is tight. Uh, so that is done. My flaps are now connected to the flap servo. And now I will carefully tuck all the cables inside. Make sure don't pinch your wires or cables. If you do that, you might have something that is not properly connected. So this is done. Now what I'll do is I'll take the top part and screw the four screws back in. That will secure the wings onto the fuselage. So as you can see it's very easy. Extremely easy to assemble. If you are buying it new, for me most of the things were already screwed in. If you are buying it new, maybe, oh wait, my, I have a problem, the, the screwdriver head is too wide and it's not going inside, so let me see what I can do with it. Sorry guys, my camera battery ran out. So as you can see, I've already installed the wing and the prop. Uh, it's pretty stormy outside. I, I don't know what it is, but in, in my previous video also, it started raining. And right now it's the same, which is why I've turned off my TV because there's lightning going on outside. So the wing is installed, it was pretty easy and uh, one thing i noticed is that if you see there are uh, vortex generators on the uh, leading edge of the wing so these things uh, unfortunately have been installed in the wrong way by the previous owner so i cannot do anything about that because these are uh, glued in with uh, double sided tape i cannot take them out but they should go the opposite way so that is a mistake that the previous owner has done. Mm, it, it won't matter much for uh, performance in a small scale RC aircraft. But yeah, if this was done in the real aircraft, it would be a real problem. So what I'll do is I'll proceed with the installation of the tail section. That's the vertical stabilizer and the horizontal stabilizer. So, oh, I. I'm not sure if I told you, I also installed the uh, landing gear. The landing gear pants are missing. So they are supposed to come as a pair of plastic uh, pieces, which just hides the metal rod that's hanging outside. It's just for added realism. It looks good, but I texted the owner. He has not yet replied. Maybe he has lost both of them. So. That's bad. Uh, installing the rear section, what you have to do is you have to take the vertical stabilizer and rudder, and there are two sticks uh, coming outside. You just have to place them on the horizontal stabilizer. Make sure that the servo horn for the horizontal stabilizer is on the downside. Okay? So That's it. Okay. Now, what we want to do is we will take this. Wow. 
and there are two holes here on the aft end of the fuselage you just need to squish a little bit wiggle them and boom this is into place all right so next step is to screw them in and after that we are going to link the linkage rods to the horns so i'll flip the plane over like that the crackling sound that you're getting in the audio is probably small pieces of hail that's coming in the rain so first thing that i want to do is i want to screw them in be careful not to damage the stabilizer don't press it on the table too much if required you can put your hand We are back. A lot of things happened in between. Power went out, and my camera died. So I've, I'm done finishing assembling the plane. So props are on. Uh, I I don't recommend you putting on the props right now before you are testing. So anything can happen. Your transmitter binding can go wrong. Uh, you might place your hand and. Bad, bad stuff can happen. So, don't do this. I'm, I'm doing this for demonstration purpose. So, I put the prop on. The wheels are on. The tail section is on. Uh, I, I did break one of the linkages. They, they are very, very delicate and has small plastic parts. So, I tried to press it in and it broke. So, this is my substitute. If you see what I'm using now is a safety pin to hold all the linkage together. It will just work fine. Uh, maybe at a later point of time I'll, I'll change the linkage rod with the with the backup tail assembly that I have. And everything is very very simple. You just have a couple of screws to uh, mount the vertical stabilizer uh, with the fuselage and. Two more smaller screws to mount your wheel and the rudder. So it's done. Uh, we are going to power up the aircraft for the first time. I will not spin the motors because I don't have a wrench to tighten the nut that's holding the prop. So just moments back, I tried to power it on, and on 50% power, it, the entire assembly went off. So I'm not going to turn the prop on. I'll put it on throttle hold so that by accident I don't power it on and I'll show you the different control surfaces that work in the different modes so you will see how the aircraft tries to level out and what it does to help you and all that stuff So you can see the rudder is moving all by itself and if I turn the plane over the light is red that's because 
in my radio i am in expert mode now i'll move over to beginner mode so this is intermediate the light turns blue and this is beginner the light turns green i'll close the battery tray guys finally i have powered on the aircraft this is a green light because i am in beginner mode now and i'll show you i'm having a tough time trying to fit this plane on my small table so i'll show you something right now if i give throttle input you see the propeller works so to avoid any accident i'll toggle this switch so right now it's in throttle hold in throttle hold look no throttle at all nothing but you can control your flight surface so uh let me show you something on the radio so if you see if your battery of the radio goes down the orange bars they will start blinking and the frequency of the blink will be going more faster as uh, along with the loss of your battery so the more battery voltage you lose the faster this blinking will become the next thing that you see uh, the green four bars that signifies the voltage battery voltage inside the aircraft that's your 3s lipo so just moments back while i was assembling the plane the battery was on charge so right now you can see full charge four four bars and while you are flying you can just keep an eye on the number of bars you have when you see one bar it's time to land so there is no need to set up any alarm whatsoever so what i'll do right now i'll show you how this safe works i'll move the plane with my hand and i will show you how the safe works so i'll put this radio aside i don't need that uh so just look at the tail section okay now when you are in beginner mode whenever you are not giving any inputs from the radio the plane is supposed to level itself out so let's say you are taking a turn like this right and you stop giving input so the plane should automatically come back to its uh, you know a level position so how it does that can you zoom in on the aileron okay just see when i move just look at the aileron moving up and down I'm not sure if the camera is picking it up. Similarly on this side. So you see, let's say that you are banking your plane towards the left and it it is in this position, okay? And suddenly you stop giving inputs. So the plane is supposed to level back. In order to level back this side of the wing should go up and how will it go up if the ailerons move down so look at the ailerons now the more i tilt the more down it goes right and if i bring it back it comes to level see now it's perfectly level with its edges now i'm tilting it back and it's moving down similarly if you are taking a bank towards your right and you stop giving inputs so to level out this wing should go down how will it go down if the ailerons move up now this is the edge the trailing edge of the wing now look when i turn the ailerons are going up it's going up similarly if i let's say you are doing an inverted flight obviously you cannot do a inverted flight in the beginner mode but you can do inverted flight in the expert mode so you are in the expert mode you are doing uh, 
inverted flight and suddenly you feel nervous out of no reason what you can do is you can flick the switch to beginner mode and just look at the ailerons what it's trying to do okay look at the edges so if the plane is in this position the shortest way to come back is to roll like this now if you see the aileron on this side it's already up and the aileron on this side it's already down right now look and it flicks flicks to the opposite way so the moon the, the main objective of this technology is if you are inverted you are scared flick the switch to beginner it will try its best to level out in the sort shortest possible way it's this now let's talk about the pitch angle okay we already know that in in beginner mode you cannot pitch pitch roll or yaw to more than 15 degrees so let's say you are already like this look at the elevators moving i'm not sure if you are able to catch that in camera but if this is the edge look when i slightly tilt the plane down so when it is in pitch up position the job of the plane to level out is to bring the tail up to bring the tail up the elevator has to go down so if you are looking it's going down now when i level out the elevator is level out as well if you are pitching down too much and you are not giving any inputs it's supposed to bring the tail down and the tails are brought down by the elevators moving up so look i know it's it's very very minor maybe i have to recalibrate the gyro it's very very minor especially it's very difficult to notice the rudder the rudder is also moving when i you are the plane like this so i can i can feel it because the plane is in my hand i can hear the servos moving and i can see maybe if i flick it this way try to zoom on this part the edge sharp edge of the rudder look the camera is not able to pick up i know but it's moving it's trying to do its best now one more thing that i need to show this is also related to the safe mode so when you are in beginner mode look at the movement of the aileron can you zoom in at the aileron yeah yeah that's right so this is the maximum amount of aileron throw that is available to you even though you are moving the stick to the extreme ends this is the maximum that is available so this is beginner mode what it avoids is since beginners do not have much experience and if you bank too much if you bank too much to either one of the sides uh, you can experience something that is called a wing tip stall so the wings they generate lift when they are in parallel to the ground when you bank the plane to one of the sides they lose lift and you know what happens when a plane loses lift it drops so that's called a uh, wing tip stall now experienced pilots can avoid that they can do a bunch of uh, things to avoid that before they fall into the ground they will recover from that stall but beginners beginners take time to think what to do decision comes from beginners with time so to avoid that so that you don't face any wind tip stall this is the maximum amount of throw that is available on your ailerons not just your ailerons if you look at the elevators look this is the maximum you cannot go beyond this okay and similarly for your rudder now similarly i'll i'll put this into intermediate mode okay now look at the ailerons 
So you see a little bit more gain. Look. And now in expert. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot. Look, expert, intermediate, it goes down, beginner. Okay. What else happens with expert mode? You get more throws on your surfaces and when you move, there is no self-leveling. Look, there is no movement at all. Right, nothing moves. You can do whatever you want. You can do upside rolls till your heart is content. You can do barrel rolls and everything. Nothing will move. The plane will not try to, you know, interrupt your actions. It will continue doing what it was doing. So, and the light has also changed to red. The only problem that I'm facing is out of the many videos that I've watched, I've seen to self level, the surfaces move a little bit more. But on this particular plane, it's not moving drastically. So I'm not sure how much it will help me in self level. Obviously it will help me, but uh, these amounts of small and slow movements will take time. So in case I'm very close to the ground before the aircraft is able to self level, I'll crash. So I need to figure that out, how to recalibrate the gyro. And very soon I'll be doing a first flight. So you will see that video as well. So this was the video all about, I wanted to do an unboxing and review and share all the features that this thing has. Look at it, it's absolutely stunning. If I put it on a grass field and take some close up shots, it will be very difficult to say whether it's a real plane or it's a RC aircraft. Uh, now you see, we are supposed to get uh, landing gear trousers, but I think the owner mis misplaced that, I don't know. So we don't have that. Maybe I'll try to carve out some pieces from cardboard and replace that because this is stinging my eyes. So I'll do something about it. And the motor specifications, I was going through the manual. So it's a 950 kV 4 pull motor. Uh, enough for this plane to do 3D acrobatics and everything. Although it is not meant to, but it can do if you want. If you are in the export mode, you can do whatever you want. So that's it about this video. Uh, if I'm able to solve the gyro calibration problem, I'll, I'll make a video on that, how to do it. And I'll, I'll also do a video on my maiden flight. The only thing that I noticed, which I was not aware of, uh, none of the videos that I have seen uh, they said that is when you are powering off the aircraft and you are in beginner mode don't do it upside down the the plane doesn't work okay so i'm not sure if this is happening for everyone or it is just me maybe this is a used aircraft or something might be wrong with the flight controller i'm not sure if you know that you can comment down and if you have any other questions you can put those in the comments as well. Uh, I'll end the video right here. And whenever I do a wedding flight, I'll post a video. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching. And stay tuned for more unboxing and flight videos.